What's going on lovely people, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my cardiology playlist. In previous videos we talked about myocarditis, cardiomyopathy with all of its types, such as chemically induced dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, restrictive cardiomyopathy, and takotsubo cardiomyopathy, or stress cardiomyopathy, known as broken heart syndrome, or happy heart syndrome. We also talked about constrictive pericarditis before. Today, we'll discuss acute pericarditis. It is acute inflammation of the pericardium of the heart, which is the outermost layer of the heart. Acute pericarditis could be dry or it could be wet, i.e. with effusion. Acute pericarditis could be idiopathic, unknown cause, or it could have a cause. Acute pericarditis can present with chest pain, but that chest pain is different from the pain of heart attacks. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my cardiology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. This playlist has more than 100 videos. Back to basics, here's the wall of the heart. Inner layer is the endocardium. The muscle layer, the middle layer, is the myocardium. And the outermost layer is the pericardium. Today's disease, acute pericarditis, affects the pericardium, hence pericarditis. Itis means inflammation, pericardium is the pericardium. Diseases of the heart can involve the endocardium, which by the way includes the valves, such as endocarditis. Next, we have the myocardium. Diseases of the myocardium include the infamous heart attack, myocardial infarction, myocarditis, and cardiomyopathy. And then we have diseases of the pericardium, including pericarditis and pericardial effusion. And just like your pleural cavity that surrounds your lungs, the pericardial cavity, which surrounds the heart, is made of two layers. We have an inner layer and an outer layer. In acute pericarditis, this is getting inflamed. Oh, 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 look at all of this inflammation. Now, what's going to happen? When this layer rubs against this layer, they will make a scratchy noise. <laughs> and this is called the pericardial friction rub. To demonstrate how it sounds like, get the pair of shoes that belong to your grandfather. Something old and original. Then rub the two soles together. You will hear what sounds like a friction rub. Now, how can we differentiate between the friction rub caused by the pericardium and the friction rub caused by pleurisy or inflammation of the pleura? Easy. Ask your patient to take a deep breath and hold it. When the patient holds his breath, the pleura is not moving because the lungs are not moving, which means the pleural friction rub will disappear on holding of breath. However, my heart is still beating even when I'm holding my breath, so the pericardial friction rub will not disappear when I stop breathing. This is the first difference. There is another difference. The pleural friction rub is usually biphasic, inspiration and expiration that's it but the pericardial friction rub is triphasic we have systolic we have early diastolic and we have late diastolic the late diastolic by the way is caused by the contraction of the atrium so the pericardial friction rub is triphasic it's <laughs> with every cardiac cycle but the pleurisy friction rub is <laughs> just biphasic. To learn more about friction rub, I have a separate video in this playlist and it's titled Friction Rub. We're talking about pericarditis today. We can divide pericarditis types into dry or wet, I mean with effusion, or you can divide them into acute versus chronic. The acute one could be nonspecific, idiopathic, we have no idea why it occurred, or it could be infectious by viruses, bacteria, fungi, or parasites. Tuberculosis is the most common cause in developing countries whereas viruses are the most common cause in developed countries. Also, we have chronic pericarditis, such as chronic adhesive pericarditis and chronic constrictive pericarditis, which we have talked about before in its separate video. As for the wetness, the effusion, pericardial effusion could be bloody hemopericardium, pussy, seropericardium, watery, hydropericardium, or lymphy, chylopericardium, exudate, transudate, blood, and chyle. And that's why doctors do not name their offspring chyle, because they know what's buzzing. They do not name their daughters malassezia either. You can download these doozy notes on my website, medicosisperfectionatus.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. 
What causes acute pericarditis? We have infectious causes, autoimmune causes, neoplastic causes, metabolic causes, post, post, and post. Infectious causes, viral, bacterial, fungal, or parasitic. Viruses are many, including Coxsackie B, echoviruses, enteroviruses, Epstein-Barr virus, etc. HIV can also lead to acute pericarditis. Viral and idiopathic causes are the most common causes of acute pericarditis in developed countries, but tuberculosis is the most common in developing countries. Fungal, such as histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis, etc. Parasites can also lead to acute pericarditis. Does anyone remember Trypanosoma cruzi, Chagas disease? Yes, it affects the heart. And do not underestimate Lyme disease spiroketal infection. Autoimmune diseases such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic sclerosis, even drug-induced lupus can lead to acute pericarditis. Neoplasms can do it. Metabolic diseases such as uremia, if I have kidney failure, mexedema, yet again hypothyroidism ruining my heart. If you have watched my previous videos, we have talked about many diseases of the heart that can be caused by mexedema. It's edema caused by myxoid substance. Anorexia nervosa can also trigger a pericarditis, probably due to the electrolyte abnormalities. And then post myocardial infarction, post cardiac trauma, and post cardiac surgery. Post myocardial infarction is very important because we have two different types of pericarditis that can happen just after MI. If it happens one to four days after the myocardial infarction, this is perinfarction pericarditis, probably due to direct contact between the myocardium and the pericardium. In myocardium infarction, the problem is in the myocardium, it can extend to the pericardium, so it takes few days. However, later, let's say two weeks or one month after this myocardial infarction, now I developed Dressler syndrome, which is also a pericarditis after myocardial infarction. And this is most likely an autoimmune disease, not a direct extension of the inflammation. Next, postcardiac trauma, such as catheter ablation of an abnormal arrhythmic focus. How about CPR? Oh, can CPR lead to inflammation of the pericardium? Of course, it is trauma. It is traumatic. It can break ribs. Pacemaker lead placement can also injure my poor pericardium. How about postcardiac surgery as in pericardiotomy? Otomy is to make an incision in. Making an incision in the pericardium can injure the pericardium. Of course, if you would like to see more cardiology videos, please drop a heart emoji in the comments. A quick EKG lesson. Here is the normal EKG, P wave, QRS, and then T wave. Where is the baseline of the EKG? It is the line between the T wave and the following P wave. This is my baseline. Now I want you to look at this, between T and the next P is something like this. So here is my baseline. What would you call this P R interval? Oh, this PR interval is depressed because it is below the baseline. Amazing. So this is PR depression. In acute pericarditis, we see PR depression in all of the EKG leads, except AVR, where we see PR elevation. Next, look at the ST segment. Oh, it is above my baseline. So this is ST elevation. Okay, look at this. Oh, it is concave, not convex. It is concave. So this is concave ST elevation. In what? In all of the leads of the EKG. This is acute pericarditis. Now contrast that with myocardial infarction. This is ST elevation myocardial infarction. Look at this. Oh my goodness. My baseline is here, but the ST segment is elevated. So this is ST elevation. Is it concave or convex? Now look at the difference. This one was concave in pericarditis, but this one is more convex in MI. More importantly, the ST elevation in MI is never in all of the leads. It's only in the leads that are affected. For example, if I have lateral wall myocardial infarction, it will be AVL and V6. If I have an inferior wall myocardial infarction, it will be lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. If it's anterior wall, it's going to be V2, V3, V4, V5, uh, somewhere there. But it's not all the leads, and this is another difference between myocardial infarction and acute pericarditis. Do you want me to make videos on EKG? Please comment below. Acute pericarditis, the causes are here. Again, we have viral, we have tuberculosis, we have autoimmune, we have uremia, and we have post-MI. And don't forget the difference between early pericarditis and late pericarditis after myocardial infarction. How about the signs and symptoms? Chest pain that is sharp 
unlike myocardial infarction, pleuritic, unlike myocardial infarction, and positional, unlike myocardial infarction, because myocardial infarction has dull, aching pain as if an elephant is sitting on my chest. Myocardial infarction chest pain is non pleuritic, meaning it does not change with breathing. But the pain of acute pericarditis is pleuritic, which means it does change with breathing. Why? Because the pericardium of the heart is near the lungs pleura. So when I breathe, I tickle the pericardium a little and the pericardium is inflamed, so it's gonna hurt. Positional means the pain changes with my body position. As I lean backwards and lie flat on bed, it gets worse because this is stretching out my pericardium. However, as I sit up and lean forwards, this improves the pain, i.e. mitigates the pain. If the pericarditis is so severe, the patient might assume the prayer's position, as in the Islamic prayer. Why? Because this position means I'm sitting up and I'm leaning forwards, which decreases the stretch on the inflamed pericardium. Other than the chest pain, we have pericardial friction rub, which is triphasic, does not disappear when I hold my breath. This scratchy sound is best heard at the lower left sternal border. Since this is an itis, we can have fever, we can have leukocytosis, we can have elevated ESR and CRP. How about cardiac troponins? Well, if it's just pericarditis, cardiac troponins should be normal, and CKMB should be normal as well. However, if this is involving the myocardium as well, meaning myopericarditis, then the cardiac troponins could be elevated in the serum. Let's do an EKG. Diffuse ST segment elevation is concave elevation in all the leads. PR segment depression in all the leads except AVR where we have PR elevation. Let's do an echo. Ultrasound. What DC? I see pericardial diffusion. Anytime there is effusion that's not responding to treatment, it is time to tap it and send it to the lab. Pericardiosynthesis. If it's a large effusion or if it's a cardiac tamponade. Send it to the lab for what? For all kinds of tests. Red blood cell count, white blood cell count, gram stain, culture, PCR, maybe it's a virus, maybe it's tuberculosis, glucose, LDH, pH, and much more. How can we treat an itis? Well, it's painful, right? So we can give pain medication such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, usually high-dose aspirin, Colchicine is very helpful. Most cases resolve and everyone is happy. As long as you take care of the underlying cause. If it's tuberculosis, treat it. If it's lupus, manage it better. If it is uremic pericarditis, this is an indication for dialysis. This patient needs dialysis. But actually, the GFR is not... Shut up. The moment the patient's renal failure causes inflammation and effusion around the heart, it's time for dialysis because this kidney failure is getting out of hand. Complications of acute pericarditis. In the minority of cases that do not respond to treatment and do not get better, constrictive pericarditis, which is chronic, can happen because if I have a repeated attack of acute pericarditis or if I have pericarditis that's not going away, i.e. it became chronic, I can get chronic constrictive pericarditis. Lots of effusion accumulation can lead to cardiac tamponade, and it can hit the next layer, the myocardium, leading to myopericarditis. Hey, medicosis, why should I give colchicine? Because colchicine is anti-inflammatory. What are the cardinal signs of acute inflammation? Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. And that's why we gave colchicine during what? Acute gout or chronic gout? Acute gout, because acute gout is acutely painful. If you want to learn more about gout, check out my rheumatology playlist. We have talked about gout, pseudogout, and pseudo pseudo gout. A special situation that we need to talk about is Dressler syndrome, aka post cardiac injury syndrome. Post cardiac injury syndrome could be caused by post MI, post surgery, post trauma, post percutaneous coronary intervention procedure. After MI, if it's like three days and I developed pericarditis, that's not Dressler syndrome. That's probably local spread of the inflammation. However, if two weeks later or four weeks later I develop pericarditis, this is an autoimmune reaction. Post-cardiac surgery, post-cardiac trauma, post-percutaneous coronary intervention, all of them can lead to post-cardiac injury syndrome. 
The problem is that most students have heard of only Dressler syndrome. They have not heard that pericarditis can happen a month after cardiac surgery, a month after trauma, or a month after percutaneous coronary intervention. It does not have to be one month. It could be slightly less than one month, or it could be two months, three, four months, etc. Symptoms, chest pain, pleuritic. Oh, it is pericarditis. Fever and leukocytosis because it's pericarditis. Diagnosed with echo to see the pericardial effusions. Chest x-ray might show pleural effusions and enlarged cardiac silhouette because of all the inflammation in the pericardium. Treatment. Dressler syndrome is largely self-limiting. We give high-dose aspirin, which is a non-steroidal or in the same family, so to speak. They block the cyclooxygenase, decreasing prostaglandins and decreasing inflammation. And what are the cardinal signs of inflammation, please? Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber Keller tumor dollar functual essay. That's some Latin for your gluteus maximus. What if the patient is not responding to uh, non-steroidals? You can try corticosteroids. Complications, it can become chronic if it's not treated. Chronicity can lead to constrictive pericarditis. Quiz time, what are the four stages of changes on EKG seen in a patient with acute pericarditis? Uh, by time, what happens earlier, and then later, what happens, and then after that, what happens? Do you want to learn about angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, ARDS, diabetic ketoacidosis, drowning, hypothermia, hyperthermia, toxicology, etc.? Then download Emergency Medicine High Yield Scores at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about antihyperlipidemics, antiarrhythmics, antianginal, antihypertensive medications, diuretics, and digoxin, download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 300 videos available on this channel if you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, smash like, hit the bell. Support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.